G'day and welcome to Barney's Daily Devotions. We've been thinking about the church. What is the church? And we've seen uh, the purpose of it's the gathering of God's people around Jesus Christ, particularly in his word, as we gather here on earth. Uh, one day we'll be gathered to him personally in heaven. And we saw that great picture in Revelation 7 of that amazing gathering that one day all Christians, well, who are already kind of part of it, will be physically and fully part of it. Uh, gather around the throne and then we teased out the difference between the church militant and the the church victorious that's the church victorious is there at rest at peace they've won they they've received the reward the the church militants here on earth it's divided it's pressured it's all sorts of things that we, we're gathered with them around jesus we're connected because Jesus has been raised from the dead and we're raised with him, but we still face the pressures and the difficulties now around sinfulness and the struggles, false teaching and all sorts of things. Uh, today, we want to think about one of the great images that the Bible uses of the church, and that is the image of the body. A body. You might look at this body here and think, "Well, that's a. I, I don't know if you like that body or not. It's a, you know, the image of glory or anything like that." But uh, the Bible uses in several important places this image of a body that the church is like a body that has parts, got arms and legs and heads and eyes and all sorts of different parts. Uh, let's pray. Let's get into what the Bible says and see what God's got to teach us about ourselves and about our relationships within the body. Father, thank you for your word and thank you for this image that you use of a body that your people have come together as one. And so we pray, please, as we uh, delve into that today, that you'll teach us and remake us and help us to understand more about ourselves, about you and about your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we come to the scriptures, there's, there's really two big sections that talk about this image of the body, that the church is like a human body. Uh, one of them we've been looking at in church on Sundays in Ephesians, it's kind of the short of the two passages, is this passage on unity in the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, he starts, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to live worthy of the calling you receive with all humility and gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And he starts talking about the gifts that Jesus has given of people and of individual abilities within those people to grow the body. And so verse 12 uh, he himself, or verse 11, he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. Then we'll no longer be children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow up in every way into him who is the head Christ from him the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part and so here is this wonderful image of God's people the church as a body and it's applicable to the gathering each gathering of God's people is this body but also the whole people of God the church militant is a body too and so there's kind of a, a local individual gathering perspective and a, a global one at this point. But uh, what is he teaching us? One is about the unity of the body, right? We've got to be pulling in the same directions. There's only one body and Christ is the head of it. Uh, he's the source of all the blessings. He's the brains behind the operation. He's the leader of the whole outfit. He is the, the head of the body. And, and so no one else is the head. We don't have another head of the world. We might have leaders within the church, and he labels some of them there, right? Apostles, prophets, and so on, uh, that are given by God as a gift. But there's only one head, and that is Jesus Christ. It's all for him, for his glory. And so if you have a church where there is an individual who is seeking all the glory themselves, where they, they are almost becoming God, the one who is worshipped, well, then you know there's a problem because there's only one head of this body and it is Christ. And what we're being told here is that 
uh, there's different parts within that body, different functions that different people, individuals have. And so we, we are united, we are one. And so we're in this interrelationship where we're still individuals, where there's children that can be tossed around. And by the way, as individual Christians can be rocked and battered in different ways. But we are all in it together and we're all joined together, connected by the Spirit of God so that we're not actually separate completely anymore. We're not individuals. We are united in this body. And so how do we think of ourselves? We've got to think of ourselves in terms of these members of the body, that I'm an arm or a leg or an eye or a face or whatever it might happen to be. Or a, um, and, and, and he talks about every ligament, every bit, doing its work to promote the growth of the body. That's the way right at the end, from Jesus the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body. Every part is, is there for the growth of the whole body, growth up into God and into Christ's likeness in godliness, in praise of him, and growth out as we seek to save the lost and we join in Jesus' mission as we, we go apart. Every part is pulling together. Uh, working in unison for one purpose, the glory of God, the growth of his, his body, his kingdom for his benefit. Uh, and uh, as each part does it in love and by the proper working of each individual part. That leads us to the second great passage on uh, the church as a body in 1 Corinthians. He's talking about how the spiritual gifts and the Corinthians were fighting over which gifts were showed you are more blessed by God God are closer to him and you, there was boasting and pride and stuff and a hopeless, hopeless situation. The, the Corinthian church would have been a terrible church to be part of until Paul weighed in with all uh, this wonderful letter of 1 Corinthians, but it really is giving them a serve for all their problems. But he gets to this question in chapter 12 about spiritual gifts or the manifestations of the Spirit. How is it the Spirit uh, works in each of us and makes us different from each other with unique ways that, uh, that we are? And he says all of that is for the purpose of the body. And so he comes to uh, chapter 12, is 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, he talks about the individual gifts and so on and uh, um, uh, but he gets to verse 12 and says, For just as the body is one and has many parts, and all the parts of that body, though many are one body, so also is Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slaves or free, and we we're all given one spirit to drink. You see that theme of unity again, as in Ephesians. Indeed, the body is not one part, but many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it's not for that reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it's not for that reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts of the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Or again, the kids cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor. And our unrespectable parts are treated with greater respect, which our respectable parts do not need. Instead, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable so that there would be no division in the body but that the members would have the same concern for each other. So if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honoured, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, prophets, third teachers, next miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administration, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all do miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in other tongues? Do all interpret? But desire the greater gifts, and I'll show you an even greater way. And then we get to chapter 13, and it's about love. Love is the greater way. And so what's this teaching us? Well, a few things that uh, in terms of this image of the body helps us to understand ourselves and God and our part in play, paying a part in his purposes, that actually he's formed us for the body 
prior, it, it, there's no greater thing you can do than to be um, praying for building up using your gifts and abilities uh, for the service of God in the growing of the body up and out just as Ephesians talks about as well uh, and um, uh, the, the, there's a few sort of self-reflections that you've got to have about yourself in that that he's talking about that there's there's two dangers of of thinking of yourself as a hand or a foot or whatever it might be one is that I'm better than everyone else because I can do all these things I have these particular talents and people who love me and respect me for them and so on and so you can start to go on an ego trip and he says that is a great problem you can't think well just because I'm a hand I don't need the eye or the foot or whatever as if you know a, a church of all one thing would be amazing it would be terrible terrible uh, and, and awful and he says that's not the way to think God's actually arranged it all so it can be even greater the sum of the parts is uh, sorry the sum is greater than the parts that make it up and so don't think more highly of yourself right you might think you're God's gift to uh, the church in a certain way well that God and you might well be but don't then start taking in the glory and thinking so I I am the one look at me uh, it's not for an ego trip but on the other hand there's an opposite danger he warns about and that is thinking I'm worthless because I don't have that gift so I'm not like that person over there I don't serve in that kind of way I'm actually inferior in God's sight he says that's not the case at all all the parts are necessary and so whoever you are God has a part for you to play in his purposes and in his church all right all of us are a gift from God to each other not so that we can have an ego trip not so that we can feel inferior but so we might know what to do and how to serve and and so we've got to do some self-examination and say is it pride that's driving me or is it inferiority that's driving me or helping maybe I'm meaning I'm not serving in the way that maybe I ought uh, they are two dangers and and most of us will fall into a temptation of one way or the other of, of viewing ourselves and he's saying both of them are problematic both of them are wrong uh, and we've got to think of ourselves we're members of this body and we've got to play our part and so finding that part and getting on with it because that's what God would have us do and actually there's joy and life and uh, in fulfilling that purpose that God gives us. We've got to remember that God is the giver of purpose and that we are tools in his head. And in this case, we are members of a body uh, to uh, serve the body. And he gives illustrations. It's not an exhaustive list of the kinds of gifts, right? It, but it includes things like administration and, and gifts of healing. And notice that's plural. It's not just a gift of healing like all the other ones are. And so I take it, it includes... Um, uh, you know, being a nurse and being a doctor as well and being the medical officer, having the first aid training as well as maybe miraculous things that you see the apostles able to do and so on. That it's not one or the other, it's just these gifts that God gives and that each church has exactly what it needs in the, the members that make it up. Uh, and that as we grow up and out, that God continues to give us what we need in each other. And so here's a wonderful way of thinking about the church. So the Bible gives us it's God's image. Uh, it's one of the images. We'll look at some more uh, in the coming days. But this is a wonderful thing. And so some things to reflect on. What's my part in the body? What's my role? Am I an eye, a foot, a hand, a, uh, whatever it might happen to be? And don't think that that's inferior or superior to all the other things. They're all necessary. We're all necessary. We're all part of God's. Uh, got family, his body, we're loved by him and we've all got a part to play in the functioning of this body that it might grow up and out. Uh, and so some other things, don't think about you know, ego and superiority, you know, if that's an issue, we've got to bring that to God and inferiority and thinking, I don't, I'm not needed, I can't do the things that those other people could do, that's hopeless too. They're the great warnings for, that come out of this image of the body. So let's pray that God might help us. Father, please help us to understand that your church is a body, just like our bodies. There are different bits that do different things and help us to understand that, that we might not be proud and think that we are superior to everyone else and that we might not be uh, overly have an inferiority complex thinking we're not as good and don't belong and that we're not real Christians. You have given and blessed each part of the body with its own honour, its own function, and so help us to realise our place 
in the body to be growing in our gifts and our willingness to serve and help us uh, as we pull our weight together to be unified and to be heading in the same direction, the direction you would have us move in of growing your body, uh, uh, joined to the head and with every supporting ligament doing its work in love. Help us to be filled with love as we go about this, that we might care for each other, nurture each other uh, in our struggles, be there with each other in our joys, celebrate with each other because we're all part of this one body, your church. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow, God willing.